Good afternoon to you. Mark Saddle, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Thursday, the 18th of October, 2018. A quick look at the Hurricane Center tropical weather outlook pages. Nothing in the Atlantic Basin right now, of course. In the eastern Pacific, we do have Invest Area 99E, and this will go on to develop and move on towards the Mexican coastline over the next few days, bringing very heavy rain. Uh, more than likely, and I think it's going to be close enough to the coastline, which I'll show you in just a moment on the model output, that it won't have a chance to strengthen very much, but it could bring very, very heavy rain uh, to the resort areas down there, and so what you lack with wind intensity, it looks like it's going to make up for with very heavy rain as it just skirts offshore of Mexico and we can see the development of this feature quite nicely here on the uh, Eastern Pacific Western Atlantic satellite loop courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com here it is right here 99E trying to get better developed uh, in this overall favorable pattern through here luckily we don't see anything trying to get together in the Western Caribbean and vicinity I think we have had just enough of hurricanes this year uh, for sure. I think that's a big understatement. So this will develop in the Gulf of Tehuantepec area and then like I said probably move very close to the Mexican coastline and then eventually the moisture will probably get drawn up into Mexico and then maybe even West Texas. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, there's a lot of mountainous terrain in here between the two areas and sometimes that's just enough to sap the energy from these systems and they don't make it across other than just high level moisture but it's something to keep an eye on looking at the model here for the eastern pacific here's california the baja peninsula the coast of mexico etc and there's our system there at the 850 millibar level and you can see it's nice and round it's concentrated bundling the energy getting stronger but the vicinity of its location in relation to the Mexican coastline and the fact that it is you know a continent with mountains uh, it doesn't bode well for its intensification and so I think the biggest threat here uh, you know it'll probably become a hurricane but I do think that it will drop a lot of rainfall uh, and that's going to be the biggest hazard here and, and certainly any of the cruise ships that come in and out of this area um, need to be paying attention to this and they certainly one would hope have meteorologists on staff and they know all about this they don't need Mark Suddeth on some YouTube channel telling them but you know that's what I'm here for to just kind of point out things even if they are obvious and uh, the good thing too is this is it covers a week in time by the way this goes out 168 hours we don't see any other developments out here so hopefully both the Atlantic Basin and the Eastern Pacific will be calming down and maybe we can you know say goodbye to the whole season but we still have almost a month and a half to go the season officially ends on November 30th and looking in the Atlantic really no reason to look out in the main development region any longer look at that nice trough that comes through temperatures in the 30s and 40s down into the Carolinas any leftover moisture still in the ground from Florence uh, that'll get wicked out real easy with this dry air that'll really help cool dry Canadian air coming down behind this trough that comes in and then the ridge comes in after that so it's the trough ridge trough ridge pattern and looking down the road past seven days the models are you know somewhat uh, interesting developing some kind of a coastal storm off of the Carolinas and then maybe up into the mid-Atlantic states non-tropical in nature but it's getting to be that time of year when we start to transition from looking out for tropical cyclones that get their origins down here in the tropics and you know even up in the subtropics towards more of these mid-latitude nor'easters these uh, I won't even call them hybrids I mean they are mid-latitude storms they form uh, from energy that comes off the continent then you've got the very warm water especially relative to average much above normal and you get these powerful coastal storms and in the winter time once temperatures are cold enough of course we start watching for blizzards and the big 
bombogenesis, as they call them, the bomb storms that form, and that's a real term, actually. Call them that, you know, meteorologically, uh, in, in terms of how quick they can ramp up the rapid intensification of a mid-latitude system. And we'll be on the lookout for that as well, because I do cover those. <clears throat> in fact, last March, I was up here in eastern Massachusetts for the major winter storm, very similar to a strong Category 1 hurricane with winds 80 to 90 miles per hour, a damaging storm surge, massive power outages. Uh, that is definitely something that interests me, and I've been covering those, um, I guess you would say, professionally as part of my duties since 2014. Uh, you know, I've been in several of them down here in the Carolinas, believe it or not. Yep, we do get blizzards. They're just more and more rare, uh, and we get nor'easters, but they seem to be happening further to the north now, farther to the north, uh, I guess because of climate change or something. I don't know. That's, that's not my realm, but you do notice when things change, right? And we don't seem to get as many of those big-time snowstorms down here and they seem to be happening much more up there. But anyway, got on a tangent. It's almost time to start looking for that kind of thing, and we'll see. At least the tropics are calming down. So I want to show you this. I've been working on the mountains of video that I have uh, collected throughout the season, Florence and Michael, and then, of course, there's activity before that. Remember, I went to Hawaii for Hurricane Lane, obviously that's not much of a, you know, that will be like 30 seconds on, on the documentary. Um, I was in Arizona for the remnants of Rosa, and I was in Mexico Beach and Panama City, ironically, at the end of May, remember, for subtropical storm Alberto. And believe me, I'm going to be putting that into the documentary that I'm starting on. It's a, going to be a long process, but... Going through the video, I'm trying to spot things that I didn't notice before, and that it is in high definition. Uh, the GoPro video from Mexico Beach helps because you can notice things, you can zoom in and you know crop the video and really notice some interesting things. And I caught this from the GoPro camera at Mexico Beach. Um, this is a very zoomed in portion of the shot. And what I want you to do is pay attention to right here when I play this video, okay? And it's going to play, I think it's in a three, it's in three loops or whatever. So watch right there. See that? Yeah, let's get rid of the telestration. Come on. There we go. And uh, watch, it comes up again. It's this huge piece of roof down, uh, I think it's at the fish market right there. And, I mean, that is enormous, and it's far away from the camera, and it just peels up higher than the telephone poles are, and then it falls down, crashes onto the street there, and once it plays again, I'm going to pause it. I mean, look at that. Just an enormous piece of roof gets lifted off. Obviously, it's, it's uh, not a very strong roof, but I was watching the real-time video, and it's, you know, much further away, and it looked like something flapping back and forth. I was like, what in the world is that? And using video processing, I zoomed in, and there you go. Just an amazing, huge piece of roof there. And you can see, as far away as it is, you know, and the bridge, there's a little bridge that goes right through here. It's washed out, uh, and it's beyond that. I think it's the fish market looking at the aerial photos of the area. And this thing extends higher than the telephone poles, for goodness sakes. And watch, it crashes into the poles once it lands. There it is. Boom. And it makes this one right here uh, dislodge all the way down. So it affected, it just it's unbelievable. I mean, the stuff I'm going to see uh, as I go through this documentary is going to be exceptional. Uh, just one more time here. Look at that. All that wind and just an amazing... I mean, my goodness, the power of, of hurricanes. So speaking of that, I talk about Patreon often. I want to show you real quick what it is. Uh, an amazing, I, I think it's just such a great idea. A, you know, you can have subscriptions through PayPal, and we do that. We have that. 
people can make donations and contributions to people that are doing things that they like, you know, that the people who watch like, creators. And, you know, that's what I am, I guess, technically as a creator. But I'm also an entrepreneur. This is my business. I've been doing this for 22 years, and we've had corporate sponsors and partnerships, uh, and, you know, over the years. But I really like working for people, you know, the individuals. And you look at this, that number right there, 132 patrons. That's 132 people, individual people that are contributing 1776. That's a magic number, right? Uh, independence. And I think that's ironic because that's what I'm trying to do. I want to just be completely independent of any type of corporate sponsorship or whatever because then I can be 100% objective and really work for the people. Uh, not that I'm not doing that now, but it'll just give me more freedom. And so this is what Patreon does. It allows me to post uh, very similar to WordPress, you know, these little blogs and updates. And I can keep the supporters, the investors, the patrons updated with inside information, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Uh, there's an app that uh, Patreon has. And when we're on the road, I can post these 15 second look lives, kind of like Instagram would have. And you remember there was something called Vine on Twitter. Uh, and eventually, I hope that Patreon expands it to 30 seconds and even a minute. Uh, 15 seconds for Mark is a little short, but I do the best I can. So this is what Patreon is, and I'm going to um, be posting updates to the documentary's progress right here uh, over the next several months as I put it together. And all of the folks that are supporting me at the $25 level or higher are going to get the first high-definition cut of the movie. I will also send them the actual raw video, the whole thing from Mexico Beach, and their name in the credits. I mean, you just can't beat that. So uh, a couple people signed up brand new yesterday, and this includes all the people that have been signed up already. Uh, one person upgraded from $1 to the 25 And I know that not everybody can afford it. I get that. But I have the responsibility of making sure that I am funded. Until Bruce Wayne writes me a check, the magical Bruce Wayne Foundation writes me a check for a million dollars and says you're good to go for 10 years, who else is going to look out for me? Nobody, right? So I have to be able to do this, and I appreciate it. You know, I'm not complaining. I'm just, this is the process. When you are an entrepreneur, you are 100% responsible for funding your work, and this is how I do it, at least part of it. You know, we also have our app, which did very well uh, during uh, Florence and Michael. We got the Android version working again. It's not 100%, but I would say 95%, which is a lot better than zero. And that's where it was when we started the season. We had a lot of problems, and we have overcome some amazing things and done some amazing things with that. So anyway, I'm done for now. Thanks for listening to me rant and rave and I'm just excited about the future. You know, we've got a lot that we have accomplished. The technology worked. We have shown you things that nobody else in the world has ever been able to show you. And it's because of the people who support me. That's period. That's what it is. You know, I have these ideas and then somebody has to pay for them. And you guys are helping to do that. Every one of you, even just watching the videos helps. Believe me. All right. That's it for now. We'll keep an eye on things. Like I said, maybe. An interesting coastal storm coming up around the 10-day time frame. Not quite ready to bite off on it just yet, but we'll see what happens. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again tomorrow.